Well, everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is the official welcome to Making Motor Moves. We'll just dive right into it here. Uh, my name is Ben. I'm George. We're both super new to this, and we're probably gonna look back at this and be like, wow. For both of us, working for John Deere has been a dream of ours, and we've accomplished that. So Ben and I actually met in an internship in summer 2017, and uh, we're both gearheads. We love to work on equipment, um, whether that's cars, trucks, boats, tractors, pretty much anything. We were fortunate enough to get a house together that, we're, that we rent. We have a great garage space here with yeah, uh, this place a mixture is, of all of our tools. Uh, we love to work on things together. We hang out all the time. And we split projects together and have a bunch of fun doing it. Having the ability to wrench and work on things and be useful in a mechanical aspect is something that's dying. We've noticed that throughout Snapchats or Instagrams or whatever we're doing, people have loved seeing what we do and they wanna learn about what we're doing and how we do it. That's why we're creating this channel. We don't know exactly where it's going. We want to make sure that we just share everything that we do because it's unique. We want to teach people. It's second nature for us to be able to work on equipment and fix it up and have fun and enjoy it. That's right. And it's something that a lot of people our age wish that they knew how to do. And we're very fortunate and blessed to be able to know how to do it. And today we're gonna kind of dive into our past to inform you guys about how we got to the position we're at today. Be on the ride along with us, uh, no matter what we get ourselves busy with. And maybe at the end of the day, you guys are a little bit entertained. But we wanna go into uh, what what our, our real purpose and mission for this channel is? Yeah, definitely. I think that yeah. ever since Ben and I met in the summer 2017 internship with John Deere, we immediately clicked, um, became great friends, and we love to invest in things that bring enjoyment to us. By no means are we professionals. We have the ability and the background and mindset to have fun with it. We want to share our lives in a way that inspires others to get out there and get active with their investments and save money and get more enjoyment out of fixing things themselves. Now we're gonna get into a little bit of how we got to where we are today and dive back into maybe some of our first experiences with a wrench in our hands or mechanics. Things that define us made us wanna pursue the degrees that we have, the job that we, uh, that we currently hold with John Deere. Try and summarize that whole journey uh, for you guys the best way we can, but I'll Go ahead and let George, George start. It's hard to know exactly where to start, but for me, it was always wondering and wanting to know how things work. And you start taking things apart, seeing how they work, putting it back together. And ben can say the same thing. I guarantee you he grew up the same way. Oh yeah. Anything that had an engine, anything that was moving, it just fascinated me. Yep. That started at a very young age, which led to a super long career of working and buying and fixing and selling career all kinds of things Listen yes to talk about career i'll kind of back up and say that i have a an uncle uncle richard of mine and he's on a family farm in nebraska he has a lot of john deere equipment and a successful farm operation there with his family it's something that i grew up always going to as a kid so i grew up in eden prairie minnesota i spent a lot of time traveling out to our uncle's farm i loved it from that point moving forward I brought that back home with me to Eden Prairie, Minnesota, which is a suburban area of Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's not the country, and I spent eight to ten times a year going to the country to my uncle's farm. Started working on small equipment in the lawn category. Push mowers, riding lawn mowers, anything John Deere, anything green. I started a lawn business when I was ten years old, and all I asked for Christmas was a John Deere push mower. And it came <laughs> downstairs, and it was underneath the tree. I was able to find a really good mentor in my neighborhood. Um, his name is Pat Prom. He was able to bring me underneath his wing when I grew up in Minnesota to learn and continue my knowledge. He's a master mechanic. He's worked on all kinds of cars and trucks and tractors, you can name it. He just taught me how to wrench and work on projects with him. I kind of became the neighborhood uh, fix-it guy. I was repairing snow blowers on the block for people, lawn mowers. Thankful to Pat, thankful to my uncle Richard in Nebraska at the farm. Because of those people, 
they actually taught me my base knowledge. I had my first project with Pat where I had a John Deere 317 garden tractor. I bought an S10 pickup when I was 14 years old just for the engine. <laughs> Took the 2.8 Chevrolet V6 out of it and I swapped a V6 car engine into a lawnmower. And it was a hot rod garden tractor. When I got to high school, I obviously was getting super excited for my license. I got my first truck and everyone knows their first car is their best car. For me, that was a 2003 GMC Sierra. Maybe. I'll show a picture of it up here. I took the knowledge and skills that I was gaining working and wrenching on my own car and worked to improve our high school car club. We together had a 1974 Corvette we bought and taught high school students who were interested in cars how to you know, partially restore this Corvette uh, and get it back to its glory. Got really involved into the GMC Cyclone and Typhoon culture, which is a very rare car. Limited production GM truck, all-wheel drive, turbo V6. I got my first GMC Typhoon in northern Minnesota, and then I traded that for a Cyclone later in college, which is going to be a lot of content because I still have that truck. It's like my dream show truck. In my senior year of high school, I actually bought a 1972 Winnebago and it was called the Eagle's Nest. And me and my three best friends in high school restored this old Winnebago and made it our high school spirit machine. We took it into car shows and camping trips and you name it. We ended up taking the, the Winnebago to Yellowstone. The transmission went out on us in uh, South Dakota in the Black Hills. I actually found a transmission shop and I actually worked to replace the transmission mid-road trip before heading off to our final destination for a wonderful trip of a lifetime. Obviously my love for mechanics um, and my love for agriculture with my uncle's connection brought me to become an agricultural engineer, um, find the best school for that, and I went to Purdue University. We had a 1987 um, Chevrolet G20 conversion van. Uh, we named it um, Winslow after the Eagles song. I did a lot of mechanics on that conversion van to have with me and my six Pledge brothers in college. Five days after we bought it, we took it all the way down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Had a couple mishaps with some worn out tires, had to oh, replace man. the serpentine belt. Yeah. All kinds of fun stuff that really excites us that we're not afraid to buy something cheap and make the most memories out of it that we can with our friends. Bought and sold a couple Chevrolet pickups, some old body style pickups. Um, worked on those, had a Pontiac G8 GT in college an old school 1991 Toyota pickup that was in pristine condition. Now I'm at a point where I finally got my dream truck and that's 2015 GMC Denali HD Duramax. That's my daily driver, that's my pride and joy. It's a truck that I know that I can haul my toys with and go out whether it's boats or my GMC Cyclone going out to the track. Combining all those experiences into Ben's experiences has led us on to a great friendship because we're similar minded and we take on those projects, we do them together now. Probably talked way too much, but no, that's... got all kinds of more projects that I didn't even cover that I've done in my past. I've had four different boats and I'll show a couple pictures of those boats that yeah. I kind of restore coming from a lake culture in Minnesota. You also see some antique boat motors as well, which I even forgot to talk about. That's right. Uh, no, I, I, yeah. I, I think I see um, a future like story time with George or story time <laughs> with Ben. You'll have to like just yeah. you'll have we'll have to pinpoint single projects from our past and just uh, yeah. There's always there's a story with every single project. So honest, honestly, I think uh, I think that'd be really cool if we yeah. you could just deep dive into specific things like that. That'd be awesome. Hopefully, you enjoyed that background, a little bit about my mechanical past, and I'm excited to hear what Ben has to share about his mechanical past. Where the heck do I begin? I, um, so I grew up just outside of St. Louis. I didn't grow out in the country or I didn't grow up on a farm, but my, my family has a small hobby farm out in, in the middle of central Missouri. And that's kind of where I really first deep dove into uh, a love for machinery and mechanics. We'd go out there and, and we'd be in the shop for, for hours working on whatever toy truck Ben wanted to make. Uh, some sort of tool chest on the on the woodworking machine. I should also uh, throw homage to my, my grandpa down in Georgia too. He's, he's a huge uh, gearhead mechanic and uh, more so of a collector, I should say, rather than a wrencher himself. And I'd go down there and visit him when I was young and he'd just have acres, hundreds and hundreds of acres filled with as far as you could see 
uh, old machineries, old dozers, old backhoes, old RVs, old tractors, old cars with weeds growing through them. I'd go off and I'd go and find the old rusted out dune buggy that hasn't ran in years and sit in the driver's seat and pretend I could, mm -hmm. I could drive it. Or fast forwarding a little, uh, working with my grandpa on his restorations now that he was actually, uh, I was actually able to turn wrenches and, and get out there with them. We've kind of benefited to our point now here at, at their expense, but um, cannot thank them enough for, for giving us that opportunities and has eventually led to our, mm -hmm. our careers and, and, and doing what we love right now with, with our uh, engineering work. The first big project that I took on myself that I can remember when I was gearing up to get my first car, uh, when I got my license, so I think I was 14 years old, kind of a Georgia situation too. I just got on to my dad and grandpa, we gotta find me a vehicle so I can fix it up and work mm -hmm. on it. It's gonna be perfect and ready to go by the time I turn 16, in which we all know they never are. God bless them, my dad and grandpa was like, man, I want that muscle car, I want that big truck uh, to be my first vehicle. We ended up landing on a 2001 Dodge Dakota. It probably was one of the worst decisions we collectively as a, a three-person group, me, my dad, and grandpa could have made, but uh, we sure as heck made it work. The first big thing that I did with that is I decided on my own to go out and find this junkyard 5.2 liter 318 uh, V8 Magnum engine for this truck, and uh, I brought it into our shop out of the farm and, and, and tore it apart and painted things and put a cam in it with some lifters and new valve springs and then plucked out the 3.9 V6 and threw in the 5.2 and... Ben's and, first swap. Yeah, Ben's first swap. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, it fired up on like the first crank. Anyway, that kind of really sparked it all because it, it gave me hope like, wow, I, I actually did this. I took an engine, tore it apart, put it back together and the thing ran after this. And I ended up driving that truck pretty much all through college. Um, until that's I, how I first met Ben with that yeah, truck. Yeah, that's right. Probably within days or if not a couple weeks later, I headed off with George and George comes to me and a couple other guys with this crazy idea. Um, we should buy a boat for the summer. All four of us pitch in and we'll take this boat out to the lake and have a good time with yeah. us and all the rest of the interns. And Ben has always had a huge interest in boats and I had those as well in Minnesota. To come out with this idea to single out Ben and my roommate and a couple other guys to get this boat project together. We found it on a Craigslist ad yeah. in Minnesota for um, a late 1960s um, Star, runabout boat. Starcraft, so, right? Yeah, yeah. The Starcraft Jetstar, 40, 16 foot. 40 horse Evan route. I grew up going to the Lake of the Ozarks mm -hmm. and was fortunate enough to have a, a cabin down there and a couple boats. And you know what, me and my family, we grew up loving water sports and skiing and slaloming and barefooting. The time that I spent on the water at the lake just made me realize how much I enjoyed being there. But then taking that and mixing into it my love for mechanics that was yes. just constantly growing, I had this epiphany. I can take this whole mechanical side of thing and I can put that on the water. Fast forwarding here, um, I'll ramble through a couple projects that you guys will see pop up, but um, we had that boat in summer 2017. Right after that, I went back to school. I bought a boat for 200 bucks down in Southern Missouri. Had to do an engine swap on it. A lot of boats use car engines. That's right, bucks, truck engines, boats. truck engines. That's where we can apply ourselves. Um, my formula had cutouts. It was a V8, it was a small block Chevy. The sound of it, I just fell in love with it. And at the Ozarks, I had always seen these massive cruisers, big fast boats. You'd roll up to bars and restaurants mm -hmm. there. From there, it just even grew even more. So we went from the formula, 1982 formula, to kind of a pause where I graduated college and then right when I started full-time at John Deere, bought a 1988 Wellcraft Antigua, 33-foot cruiser. From Lake Minnetonka, Minnesota. With a, a single 454 big block. Um, I went through that entire boat, mm -hmm. uh, nuts and bolts, fiberglass, wood, and, and really cleaned up that boat and uh, ended up selling it in the middle of the summer, I sat there after selling the cruiser and was like, wow, what's what's the next step here? Um, Each project has led to the next. That's right. Each boat project that's right. was fixed up, sold for a profit to go into the next yeah. boat. And guys, I'm not spending thousands of dollars mm -hmm. to begin with. Um, I took the money from George and I's boat and mm -hmm. took 200 bucks and threw it another boat and turned it into a couple thousand, threw it another boat and mm -hmm. turned it into another couple thousand. And it's, 
it's all stepping stones to the next thing and that's yeah. what we really want to get you guys to realize now here we are i've got my 1987 formula sitting outside i've got its two engines it's twin engines sitting right in front of me here in the shop this is us in a nutshell yeah. we are going to take you guys on a journey we hope that by the end of the day you can look at our page as an inspiration for you to take on that next project that you might have been a little too cautious to think about instead of spending all kinds of money and time from a licensed professional mechanic to do that work for you we want you to be inspired to tackle it yourself it's also to showcase the fun and entertainment and just general camaraderie that we share right. each day after yep. work on the weekends we truly believe we were born in the wrong generation we were born in the wrong era but we're bringing it back we're, we're making motor moves we're bringing it back yeah and we're excited to yeah. uh, bring you guys along all of our projects yeah Everyone out there, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys sitting here uh, and taking the time to get to know us. If you like what you see so far um, and all the videos to come, uh, give this channel a follow, subscribe. Like, share, yeah. subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> Making motor moves. Uh, we're out there on multiple platforms, Instagram, TikTok. Link in the bio. Facebook, yeah, links are all out there. We're doing this for us, but we're also doing this for you. It's fun, but. Let's go eat some food. Yeah, <laughs> welcome to Making Motor Moves. Take it easy, guys. See you later. Ha ha ha!